boys and girls. Welcome to episode two of the brand new feature where I am going to be looking in depth at certain players that may well be making a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Some of them may happen, some of them may not happen, but I'm going to try and keep it as realistic as possible. Now, as usual, we get linked with a ton of players. I'm not just going to pull all the names out of the hat. I'm just going to look at some of the areas that we do need to sign players in and who could possibly be the best fit for Arsenal. Who could we realistically buy? We're not going to be going out there and spending 80, 90, 100 million pound on players. So we've got to look in certain areas and we've got to scout the market. That's why we've got some of the best guys in the business doing the job and hopefully we can find a few gems in there as well. Now today, I'm going to be looking at the centre-back position and the player that I am going to be looking at is Deo Upamecano. Now, if you don't know about this guy, believe me, you will know all about him very soon. He is one of the most sought-after defenders in the Bundesliga right now. 20 years old, he's French. And he plays for Leipzig and he is an unbelievable player already at his age. A host of clubs all around the world are interested in signing him, including the likes of Manchester United. Um, but Arsenal, they are being mentioned also. Now, if it was a battle between Arsenal and Manchester United, you've got to think that it may go down to who qualifies for the Champions League. It doesn't seem a lot these days. You look at the size and the stature of clubs and that used to be the pulling power um, where both Manchester United and Arsenal are concerned. Um, two of the biggest clubs in England by a mile. Manchester United streets ahead at the top, but Arsenal most definitely in the top three. Now, like I said, it can come down to who gets into the Champions League, but if we both get there, it could well come down to who offers the most money. And I feel that if that is the case, then Manchester United will win that one because we don't end up offering stupid money for anybody. Um, but let's have a look at him. What a player, like I said, his attributes. He is big, powerful, skillful. Um, he loves coming out from the back with the ball and he loves defending. It is as simple as that. Now, Leipzig are currently sitting third in the Bundesliga. They're not going to be catching the likes of Dortmund or Bayern Munich. They're over 10 points behind them. But an interesting stat is that Leipzig have the best defensive record in the German league. Only 20 goals conceded all season. And one of the main reasons for that is this guy. He is just a phenomenal player. He is perfect for Arsenal Football Club. The best comparison that I can give, okay, would be, you remember Sol Campbell and Colo Torre um, during the Invincible season. Now, Sol Campbell is very much the same kind of mould as Socrates. Big, powerful, you know, loves to defend, loves to get in your face, um, but not quite as athletic. And then you look at the likes of Colo Torre and Deo Upamecano and they are very comparable. Quick, powerful, athletic. They balance each other perfectly. Now, a lot of talk um, in terms of defenders have been mentioning players like Harry Maguire at Leicester. But I feel that he's too similar to the likes of Socrates. We need someone that can counterbalance what he does someone that's quick, someone that's powerful. And that's no disrespect to Harry Maguire because he is quick um, and he is a powerful guy. I just feel that it's not what we're looking for. Plus, being the fact that he's English, um, we already know what English sides do. They bump an extra 20, 30 million pound on top and they end up becoming 70, 80, 90 million pound. Now, I'm not saying this guy is going to come cheap because believe me, he will not come cheap. You're probably well in excess of the 40s and 50 million pound mark. Maybe even more. Who knows? It depends how much Leipzig dig their heels in because they know they've got a serious talent on their hands. Now, they bought him a couple of years ago for around about 10 million euros. So if they do end up selling him for around about 40 million, 
then they're going to make themselves a tidy profit. Now, they've got a history of players coming through their ranks that have come out to the likes of the Premier League. Um, Kaita is one of them, um, went to Liverpool this season, but it depends how much Arsenal want him. And it really depends um, how much he would want to come to Arsenal, to be quite honest with you. In my video yesterday, I've done a detailed analysis against the likes of Hector Bellerin with Wan Basaka. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that for this one because it's not going to be a player that's going directly head to head against another. The beauty of the centre back position is that unlike right backs, left backs, right wingers, left wingers, etc., there's four players to two positions. Whereas in those wide areas, there's one player, you know, fighting with another. So we need more than just what we've got. Now, you look at some of the players that are there at present, you look at Mustafi, I think it's very clear that he will be gone at the end of the season. If we can get him off the wage bill and if we can get someone to actually buy him, then he will be gone. Lauren Koscielny, he's getting on now. Um, can he last a full season? Probably not. Um, but he would be the perfect foil for somebody like this to come into the side because, of course, he's French as well. Um, he currently hasn't got any caps for the uh, French national side at senior level, but he is regularly playing for the under-21s. And he's already got a friend there in the under-21s that play for Arsenal, and that's Matteo Guendouzi. So uh, maybe you could have a little word with him. Um, of course, there is a history of French players at Arsenal, which is appealing because a lot of these young players, they grew up watching Arsenal because of the likes of Patrick Vieira, Thierry Henry, Emmanuel Petit. You know, so because of that, you know, there's that kind of connection with Arsenal. Um, but that said, there's a lot of teams after him. Um, and it would be a very difficult one to get over the line. But is it out of the question? No. Is it realistic? Yes, it could well happen. Um, also, another part of the contingent as well, you've got the likes of Alexandre Lacazette there. Um, Abamyang, he speaks French as well. Um, Gwendozi, as I've mentioned, and you think about when Gwendozi joined the club, the way that Abamyang and Lacazette took him under their wing. The same kind of thing could happen as well. They could take him under their wing and make the integration very, very easy. Now, if you haven't seen this, lad, I suggest you go and watch some Bundesliga games. I suggest you go and watch back over the last year or so at some of his performances and you will see exactly why he is so highly rated. And at his age, 20 years old, the longevity is unbelievable. Now, I believe that we've got a good relationship with Leipzig. Emil Smith-Rowe is currently on loan out there at the moment. Um, the only thing that would worry me is if they would let this transfer happen and they want something to happen with Emil Smith-Rowe because there has been rumours that they're very interested in signing him on a permanent basis, but Arsenal are not playing ball. Um, they have high hopes for Emil Smith-Rowe and um, they just want him to go out there to gain some experience. Because at the moment, a lot of the young English boys are going out to the Bundesliga and tearing things up. Um, so yeah, the relationship in itself seems pretty good. Um, they're a club that's not desperate for money. That's for definite. Um, but listen, when you put the right kind of money on the table, then you never know. So um, it's a very interesting one. And um, he is one of a few players that I'm going to go and get into over the next few days. But he is definitely... One that for me should be top of our priority list. He would be absolutely brilliant for Arsenal Football Club, in my opinion. Alongside the likes of Socrates, he would be brilliant. And you've got to remember, we don't always play two at the back. A lot of the way Unai Emery likes to play is three at the back. When Rob Holding comes back from his injury as well, you could have a back three of Rob Holding, Socrates and Upamakana. And that... Sounds like a pretty decent back line, if you ask me. Of course, we've got another young lad in there, Mavropanos. Um, he's had a bit of a wretched year, to be quite honest with you. I've been struggling with injuries. But he also is highly thought of, or so I'm led to believe. Um, he was before Emery came along anyway. But 
um, given some recent decisions not to include him in the Europa League side. Maybe Unai doesn't feel that he's quite ready, but this guy, believe me, he is ready and I would love to see Arsenal sign him. So there we go. That is the second episode of the players that I would look to see signing for Arsenal this summer. If you know about this guy, please let me know in the comments section uh, what you think. Is he the perfect signing for Arsenal? Is there someone else in the centre-back area that you would like to see at Arsenal? Please remember, try and keep it realistic. Um, you're looking at some players out there at the moment and the likes of Kudabale. I would love to have that guy at Arsenal. But let's be realistic. 80, 90, 100 million pounds, it's just not going to happen. So we need to shop within our budget and we need to shop around. And this is a player that I feel we may be able to get our hands on. So yeah, anyway, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like for this video. And um, yeah, like I said, get yourself involved. Let me know in the comment section what you think. So until tomorrow, where I will be looking over another centre-back place, I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.